biologists are learning how to clone, and they are mixing genes to create new species. But above all, they are becoming masters of the molecules they study. We are at a turning point in history, and the potential impact of this work excites leaders in the field like Princeton's Lee Silver. Now as we enter the 21st century, it is perfectly clear that we're going to understand what it means to be human at the smallest level. We're going to be able to pick apart human cells, and not only are we going to be able to understand it, we're going to be able to manipulate human beings. We're going to be able to change our genes, change our cells, change human beings in every kind of way that you can imagine. All you have at the beginning for the first two weeks is a mass of cells. And when you want to make embryonic stem cells, what you're doing is taking cells from this initial embryo, which is just a mass of cells. So it is alive in the sense that, yes, it's a human life, but it's not alive in the sense of being conscious. And I think there's quite a difference between conscious life and cellular life. The genes are a book of information that describe how each human being will develop, and we can now read that book. And for the very first time, we're going to be able to see inside of every human being. But if we can read the instructions that build us, does that mean that one day we will be able to use this information to actually predict a life? Here at the beginning of the 21st century, we can see what's going to happen. We can see where this technology is taking us, and it's taking us towards a point where we will have this individual information on people. We'd be able to predict from day one how tall they would become, what color their hair would be, what color their eyes would be, whether they would need to wear glasses or not. All of these physical characteristics can be predicted from the genes. We're going to be able to see the future before it happens. Contained within this dish are bacteria that will be working throughout the night for Edward. Incredibly, these bacteria are part human. Their genes are no longer entirely their own. Instead, a human gene, the growth hormone gene, has been patched into their genetic makeup. And so, throughout the night, they will be producing growth hormone for Edward. Scientists figured out how to be able to take bacteria which are so tiny that you could put 20 on the head of a pin they figured out how to put in the gene for growth hormone and thereby change these bacteria into factories. And these microscopic factories do this job incredibly well. These animals are part mice, part jellyfish. The gene that makes jellyfish glow has been inserted into their DNA and they now glow in the dark. Genes that confer similar unusual abilities have been put into monkeys and could be put into us. Once we understand that DNA is the genetic material in all living things, there really is no limit to what genes you can put into any living thing. There is no reason why we couldn't put genes into human beings that didn't exist there previously. Adding genes to us from all over the animal kingdom is fraught with dangers and practical difficulties. But it could happen. People are very much afraid of this, and yet, I'm as convinced as ever that within a hundred years it's going to happen. Imagine a world where every facet of your child's medical history, its strengths, its vulnerabilities, could be uncovered by tapping into a computer. We will not be the same again because there's so much information which was hidden away, which is now open for everybody to see. 
Today, we know more about how to build a human than ever before. For the first time, they have proof that delaying aging is possible. But not everyone thinks it should be done. If you talk to any molecular geneticist in the world today, they will have to admit to you that this could happen. They may hate it. With all of their heart, they may hate it. But they have to admit that the technology exists for this to happen. Drugs that have doubled the lifespan of animals may soon be tested on humans. But are we ready for the changes a true elixir of youth would bring? These technologies are in their infancy, but technology has a way of exceeding expectations. I mean, imagine what's going to come next, and the only thing that I'm willing to say is that it's going to surprise us, that the things we think are impossible today are not going to be impossible in the future, which is why I know that by the end of the 21st century, we're going to be able to completely manipulate what it means to be a human being. The new science of genetics promises to change our world beyond all recognition. Whether it's for better or for worse will not be decided by science, but by society. Knowing how to build a human may ultimately be less important than what we do with that knowledge.